Waiting for the broadcast to start. And we are live on Monday night. Welcome on in to another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm typically Will, and I think this Monday I still am. I'm always Sarah. It's been a long quarantine. Yeah. But today we're joined by Kyle and Irene, uh, both brand ambassadors with Teeling Whiskey Company over in Ireland. Matt, before we uh, jump into that, who do we got in the stream with us already? All right, let's see who we got. We got Brian over at Kilco. How's it going? If you guys haven't checked out Coco's channel, please do. And our buddy Jason, the Mash and Drum. Obviously, congrats on hitting 30K, Jason. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. Donald Rance, the Irish Whiskey Yoda, who was a huge fan of Teeling. Uh, so we got here Brent, his one lost cause. We got Donnie, the Linux Cat, uh, Mark JG, William Devilar. Uh, let's see, I know Ben uh, Demon Hunter, Runnings. All right, of course, like I said, the thing likes to do all its cool stuff and restart. So, Whiskey Tornado, how's it going? Mark's going to have Whiskey Tornado. Check him out as well. He's going to be on with us on December 28th. So, there's Zach and Floydian and all the other cool people coming in. So, up oh, we lost Irene for a second. We got her back. <laughs> hey, Nick, how's it going? Scott, Galen. It's all good. We're good. All right. So tonight is healing. As I think you guys all know, we are big fans of healing. I have reviewed a few. Also, let's check out our buddy Spirited by the Wisdom, which is Sam, which is the, he also is our awesome author. Uh, check out his channel. And so we brought all the cool new stuff, and they you can let us try the Black Pits now, which I'm very excited. Peated Irish. I'm super excited about this. Ooh, Sarah's not, but we are. So uh, I guess you're going to take away in the healing <laughs> history, and we'll go from there, and we'll start drinking some whiskey. So... Who's going? Which uh, one? Irene, Kyle, which one do you want to go first? And which one? you can introduce yourself. Go, go for it, Irene. Lady first. Hey guys, some of y'all might remember me. I live in Austin, Texas, and I cover the South Central United States region. So primarily gonna be uh, the Central Texas and Houston area, but I get up there to Louisiana, Oklahoma, and all that. So Colorado sometimes. And uh, Kyle. And I'm Kyle Hilla, so I'm uh, landlocked here in Dallas and Fort Worth area, uh, but also the Teeling brand ambassador here. And uh, second time on the show, so really excited for it. Yeah, we're like brother and sister. <laughs> yeah. And Irene, uh, this is the third timer for you, third timer. It club, right? is the third time, and you're going to see me again with Gareth from Brewers Network. That's right. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Sounds like a plan. Well, you know me, I can't uh, I can't go too long without something in my glass. So I went ahead and poured some of the small batch because I know that's what we're going to be talking about that's first. Great idea. That is a great idea. idea. Yes. I hope so everybody else has a bottle of this guy. Yeah. Mm. Small bottle. You, us, yeah, these wonderful little yeah. tiny. So yeah, they a cool uh, box here that had the little minis in it. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I really appreciate yeah. that. I know we got a super chat here, so let me grab that real quick too. From Whiskey Tornado. All right. Wow. Let's see here. From Whiskey Tornado. Thanks so much for an amazing content, guys. One of my favorite channels. Cheers to having Thanksgiving. Thanks, Mr. Tornado. Appreciate it. That's Lance, by the way, everybody. So, like I said, hope you're on with us on the 28th of December. Yeah. All right. Mm. All right. So, let's, mm. let's go over yeah. what, what Tealing is and how it came about. And I know it's a new brand, but an old brand at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just had our five-year birthday. Yeah. I guess was that over the summer though? Um, yeah, it was like you know, at this point, that's COVID. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is. What day? Hi, <laughs> what's going on? It's Thursday. Um, <laughs> but we've been making. Well, we haven't. But the Teeling family has been making whiskey since 1782. So, pretty excellent story behind that. Um, what happened was there was this whole history of how the the whiskey industry sort of crumbled among other reasons, also including um, prohibition. Hmm. And because of that, there was 60% of the exports um, from Ireland were whiskey. And the United States was taking on a lot of that. Uh, unfortunately, it kind of crumbled and they were kind of left with some bigger brands kind of keeping whatever was left of it alive. And they were very adamant about keeping up with the pot still whiskey and not doing, uh, not innovating to do the column stills, which is a quicker process. So after prohibition, Scotland could keep up with the demand and Ireland unfortunately could not. So uh, all of that happened, some bigger brands basically kept it alive um, in, a, in, a, in a small, I guess, in a way to like keep the whiskey going, right? 
1987, uh, the Teeling brothers father actually opened up a distillery and he sort of was able to pick up all these model distilleries. I sort of like to compare it to what, what heaven Hill did in the United States, as far as picking up those, um, those mothball distilleries. And then, uh, one thing led to the next, the Teeling brothers decided to do what most of us do and get out of the family business for a while, go do our own thing. And then realize sometimes that it's better to be working with family and figure all that out. So both of the brothers came back and uh, started working with their dad. And I'll let Kyle take it from here because I've been talking the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, the Teeling brothers. So while working with their dad at the distillery, they actually met Alex Chasco, uh, who worked there as well. So Alex Chasco is our master distiller. Um, one of my favorite sayings that it is, uh, whiskey is beer when it grows up. Um, just talking about the process of it. And I, I feel like that actually embodies a little bit of Alex himself because he was a Portland craft brewer and then moved to Ireland, uh, to, to join, uh, the Teeling's dad at his distillery and worked there, met the love of his life and stayed in Ireland. And then now the Teeling brothers have brought him over. So he was the very first employee for Teeling uh, and is our master uh, distiller. So they basically, you know, kind of talking a little bit of what Irene was talking about of this huge decline of, of Irish whiskeys. They were literally exporting 60% of the whiskey for the world at, the, at that time and then went down to like 1% of the whiskey uh, sold. So, you know, again, from the, you know, prohibition to the war of independence with England. It cut off all their ties and of them selling whiskey. So, um, you know, when the Teeling brothers were looking to reopen a distillery, they really wanted to showcase just, uh, um, how alive Irish whiskey really is and, and the art that they've, you know, kept alive this whole time. So they did what they should have done and, and opened Dublin, so they opened up their very first distillery in Dublin. It's the very first distillery to open up in 125 years. Um, so it's it's an amazing distillery. It's in the heart of the Liberties, um, which is a fantastic uh, uh, historical area for whiskey nerds as well. <laughs> a lot of artisans back in the day, that was where they kind of got their, you know, they had to do whatever they wanted and have the liberty to do that, right? Yeah, didn't have like 30 distillers there at one point in time back like back a long time ago in that area, something crazy like that. Yeah, there's also this cool, like, well, it's not a cool, I don't know if it, I would say the story is cool, but um, so we don't age at the distillery, mm. partially like not because of this, but just sort of as like a nod to this story of a distillery having a fire and whiskey was just coming down the streets and people were just picking it up in their boot. It was on fire and at a really, really high proof. Insane. <laughs> yeah, I'd be swimming. smart. Fire or no fire, I'd be swimming in it. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be fine. Don't worry about your no. body flaming down the river of whiskey. Yeah. You'll be fine. <laughs> wow. Oh, I also give a shout out to Trev Wilson, another trying to get a check. And of course, our buddy Ed, the Rock Review, is really, really wants his black pits badly. He also is a huge Irish whiskey nerd and, uh, Peated whiskey, so he's very excited about the black pits. Well, I'm excited today. to get to it tonight. Uh, I didn't even know it existed until yesterday. <laughs> uh, I was I was excited when Matt put that photo up, and I, I, I that's when I learned about it. So, <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's the uh, definitely the only peated whiskey in Dublin. So, yep, this is very cool. Very very cool. Um, you know, Will, I think you have a picture of the distillery. Um, but uh, yeah, the the story itself when you built it in Dublin, they, they really did a great job. You what? Here's the picture. Oh, I just read that. Hey, we'll read that out in a second. We'll talk yeah. about that. And then we'll do it. Um, oh, so, gorgeous story. And, and one of the reasons why we have this beautiful Phoenix uh, logo for Teeling is this rise from the ashes mentality. So, this area in the Libertines you know, went through a hard recession um, and they they went to open up the distillery in 2015 during the heart of this recession they were kind of going through. Since then, we're really seeing a 
you know, the rise from the ashes mentality of this area and a lot more businesses and, and corporations coming in. So we're kind of, you know, it, it's really touches on just where the distillery is and what they're able to do. Well, and before American prohibition, before the Irish whiskey collapse, Irish whiskey was known the world over as being the quality whiskey. Uh, it was, you know, that was the best stuff you could get was the Irish stuff uh, from, you know, my memory of history. Yeah, and that's what we really want to showcase with the pot still whiskey that we're going to be tasting as well. Yeah. That sort of just like, you know, old school, traditional, we're the best and we're not going to, you know, we're not so, going to play. And, and originally, Dublin whiskey was actually considered some of the best that came out of Ireland. And that's where we first see that E being put into whiskey, uh, mm -hmm. really to be this standout of like, if it if you spelt whiskey with an E, hey, it came from Dublin, Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh, and then other people started just picking it up. Mimicking uh, that. Mimicking it quite a bit. Yeah. But it, it started out with trying to showcase that in Dublin, this, this whiskey was some of the best whiskey being made at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I really think is interesting is, um, you know, back to the history of it all, they, they used to tax distilleries based on how much malted barley they brought into the distillery because they could sort of figure out the yield. And so Ireland got wise and they were like, well, we're going to use 50% unmalted barley then. <laughs> So that's also another fun traditional thing that we do with the pot still as well. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we don't want to get into that yet. We're going to taste the other stuff first, right? <laughs> yeah. So the the small batch is a combination of what the the, the your single grain and your single pot still. No, that uh, it's it's from the family whiskey basically. Um, it's kind of a blend of uh, it's grain and malt. Okay. And it spends uh, 12 months finishing in Caribbean rum casks. Nice. So something that's really nice across the whole line and, and kind of what, when they went to really start creating their own Irish whiskey, they were looking to be, you know, to create their own voice of like what teeling is going to taste like, what it's going to be like. Um, and so they went out and they talked to, a bunch of industry people, a bunch of bartenders, uh, world renowned bartenders from all over the world. And they kind of sat at their bar and like, you know, just talked to them about Irish whiskey and to get their take on Irish whiskey. What they kind of found through all these conversations is that most bartenders felt like Irish whiskey really didn't hold up in cocktails, that it uh, was more of a shot whiskey. And then when you get into the higher tier, Irish whiskey was more of a sip and whiskey, but there was nothing really. Uh, it almost came out too clean of a taste to really stand up in cocktails. So one of the reasons why in our core line, you'll find that uh, we do all 46 proof, uh, 46%, sorry. Uh, so it's a higher proof. That way it stands up in cocktails, but also uh, non-chill filter, no color added to any of these. So it is a higher proof on, on all these. And that small batch really kind of comes through. And so that I feel like even that higher proof helps that rum kind of linger and carry through that that uh that back end. Yeah, I think it it kind of allows it to have to be a little bit more layered. It does stand up in cocktails. Um, it also lends itself to not only a great Irish coffee, but I mean it makes an excellent daiquiri as well. Oh, it's good to know. I've never had an Irish daiquiri. That sounds Me super either. interesting. Yeah. Looks like something to try. Yeah, you might have to go out and try that. It's uh, like a strawberry one with it, or just a uh, I would say just a like very like traditional one that uh, I bet in in that Dallas area, Kyle can recommend a, a good place for you to go near your near where you guys are at. Yeah, yeah. if you really want to crazy, you should have one of Irene's YooHoo teeling cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. did you guys see my Instagram about that or my Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> I was so we were talking with our global. Uh, ambassador out of the UK where it's very cold there now and as we know Texas is pretty warm and so we were kind of brainstorming on like hot chocolate bars and things like that we can mix up with uh, the teeling and I was like let's I just was trying to think like nostalgic and I was like what about you how fun would that be 
So I made this like super duper easy cocktail. Like I just built it in the glass. It was uh, two ounces of the Teeling small batch and then ice and half cold brew coffee and then half Yoohoo. Just stir it up. It's so good. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I've had bartenders, like I want to do that. Like one of my bartender friends like did an event and he basically made like a Yoohoo foam to put on top of a cocktail. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to need to get I've never seen, seen chocolate milk used for that. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're like, that. Where, where do we get Yoohoo? <laughs> Amazon or the grocery store. You know? oh. so we have a lot of fun with it. It's definitely what, you know, we they made it so that we can play with it. We can have fun with it. Um, and then it's really going to stand up. It's also great on its own. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Next to a beer, next to kind of whatever you like, really. Next to a Yoohoo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you use as a depth charge. Also works. Works for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do y'all think of this? Do you, what do you get from the. I've, I've enjoyed this core line. The, the three that have been out for a couple of years now um, have been solid. I've, yeah. I've enjoyed the heck out of them. We, I tasted all three of them. I think we both tasted all three uh -huh. of them um, at a little bar um, around the corner from us that bought all three bottles and, and sold them as, you know, you bought, you know, one shot oh, of it and you've flight. got all three, you know, small oh, amounts flight. of it. So nice. it was uh, the Trinity. The Trinity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was fantastic tasting through them. The single malt. Oh, Silverleaf. Yeah, Silverleaf. Yeah, I remember that cigar bar. <laughs> or, it was a while, a while ago. Yeah, I mean we have we, we have, have a single, single grain, grain back here. Yeah, left. Um, it's it's almost gone. Yeah, because then uh, Julian came here last year and did that awesome event at the house, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hopefully, yeah. That's when we had that later. twenty-four year. He definitely mm -hmm. saved my ass. I was supposed to do that event with you guys, and I had to go out of town, and I was like, Julian. <laughs> Yeah, that's how we got in contact with. Yeah, because of that. Yeah, that's how this all started. I was like, I have somebody. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thank God, because yeah, it was like, well, the, it was only a few days before. Yeah, yeah that was like an emerge. It was an uh, like a family emergency that I had right. to get out of town for. Yeah. Um, but it was a good night. You. The twenty four <laughs> flowed like wine. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That, that was before our time, but I definitely had some of that twenty four with Julian from time to time. So. Yeah, it's good stuff. Single malt. What's that? It won best single malt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It did that's right. Best single malt in the world. Yep. Yep. Good. Well, you guys mentioned the single grain. Should we move on to that one? Sure. sure. I'm a little ahead of you. I'd actually just poured some. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Yeah, I let us catch up. I need to catch up. I'll gladly catch up. Let's do this. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm gonna this price wise. <laughs> You're better off spending ten dollars more on this and then getting an actual so you want to drink over some of the other uh, uh, blends that are out there that I'm not a big fan of from Ireland. Plus, those are at eighty and this is at ninety two. So that alone is already a better product just for that. Yeah, yeah. that right there. You get that um, shiny metallic it. note that I find on theirs that I don't like that I, you don't get on this one. Right, which right. helps tremendously. So one thing that you know in in Scotland is you know, must be aged in oak. And then the cool thing about Ireland is must, must be aged in wood, you know, like oak. And so Alex just really leans into that idea of just having fun with the cast treatments. And so the single grain is 95% corn and it's going to give that big fruity note. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have a little here. And um, well, that's a single malt. Just kidding. Yeah, I figured I'd pull the big bottles out because just because they look prettier on camera. They do, yeah. I have the big bottle here, and so it's aged exclusively in California um, red wine Cabernet casks barrels. Um, so you know we have, like Kyle mentioned earlier, non-chill filtered, no coloring added for consistency. We have this dark bottle because this is kind of our go-to one, and we don't want you know a regular consumer that doesn't you know quite grasp the idea that casks can give off different colors. So that's mm -hmm. another reason to have that darker bottle. But with this one, we really wanted to showcase like what the casks are doing with the color. Okay. I did wonder on that why it was the only clear one. Now I know why. Yeah. I mean that I mean, maybe I'm just guessing that's, no. that's my idea. <laughs> no, hey, that's a good reason. I that's always wondered. I thought it was a marketing reason, but I wasn't sure what it was. Alex takes the single grain to another level yeah. in this one too. So when he talks about uh the single grain uh whiskey 
he talks about it as a category in general for um, Ireland that, you know, it, you know, grain whiskey has been used for blending a lot, but not really a standalone whiskey category in itself. There's not a lot of good uh, seal grains on the market for Ireland. And he really wanted to showcase that there actually can be delicious single grain. And he showcases with the, with this and then finishing in that Napa Valley cab barrels or just, I mean, it brings that beautiful kind of like red berry fruit and like black mm -hmm. pepper right on the yeah. back end. And it, it just it smooth and drinks. Well. Yeah. Like, approximately is the single grain. One of two corn whiskeys. Mm. Wow. How, Matt's question was how old is this? Guy, approximately. How old is what, Alex? The single grain, approximately. Oh, oh, the single grain is about. Uh, it's between five and seven years. Which is amazing, and the reason I ask is, is most scotches that I've had that are single grain are terrible in that. Like they're just awful. You have to get <laughs> to like eighteen year plus to get decent single grains out of Scotland. But this is actually really, really good, and I thoroughly enjoy drinking this one. And have, as you can see, based on the bottle, there's not much left, and <laughs> that's it. It's so good. So this is this is ninety five percent corn, but I'm assuming this is pot distilled. Column. Oh, you are column um, distilled. Um, so yeah. Interesting. It's um five percent malt barley just to get those enzymes rolling around, get a better right. yield. This would probably be a good one to give uh, a bunch of bourbon drinkers a switch from yeah. the Irish too. Oh well, yeah. And I've actually, yeah. I've Anytime someone's that, like, I don't know, I'm like, try this. <laughs> I've compared this to Michter's American, and some people have told me I'm crazy, but I really feel like this is a very, you know, similar comparison to like Michter's American, with that light wood influence, but you know, the still the the rich heavy corn. Yeah, yeah. Okay, like we, got, we got super tired from Buddy Jason. The Master Drama says, "Here's you guys in Teeling have been talking about how great Teeling is for a long time. So impressed by their core line. Single grain has been my favorites. Single all is creeping up their cheers. Thanks, Jason." Appreciate it. Cheers, Jason. Cheers. I yeah, like the bacon to try with this. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is a it's it's a fruit bomb. I love it. Oh yeah. I always say hi to John Gunzel down there at the Crowded Barrel. How's it going, John? Hey, John. Yeah. Oh, this is good stuff. I failed last time, and I didn't have bacon, so I'm pretty proud of myself. I know. <laughs> you told, she even told me beforehand she was gonna have bacon, so that's even more impressive. I didn't burn mine this time. Hey, hey. Yay. That's a big plus. Burn bacon's good, though. <laughs> Not bad. There's no bad bacon. Yeah. Even even bacon that's kind of even gone. extra crunchy. Yeah, it's fine. It's still good. It's yeah. Still My little yeah. hippie grocery store doesn't have anything that's um, cured. So mine's not. Mine's uncured bacon. It's, it doesn't get as crispy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you came for the bacon now? Here, take your bacon and leave. <laughs> no screaming. No, you no more. You scream again, I'll come take your bacon from you. It's like Beetlejuice. If you say the word enough times, the kill the children just come running for it. People yeah, are disagreeing with me that burnt bacon is awful. <laughs> no, I, I like burnt bacon. Depends on what kind of bacon it is. Yeah. I hate like the the like. I hate it when it's not cooked enough. It's just like mm. yeah. Talk about not like viscosity, right? I'd rather have the viscosity in my whiskey, not the bacon. Uh -huh. the bad bacon is the one someone else ate. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Yep. <laughs> that is the truth. It does taste really good with bacon. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. It's yeah, it really delicious. does. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. one's super unusual. Like Alex said to us just this past week, like one of two distilleries that are making the corn whiskey in Ireland, which is pretty, pretty cool. And I, I was actually really surprised by that low number. I thought it'd be a little bit more than that, but. I mean, they're they're making grain whiskeys. They're just blending it in. They're yeah, not, like not, not, not sorry, yeah, not uh, not single grain. I guess is what I meant to say. Yeah. Sorry. They're not releasing that as a product. Nope. Yeah, they have it. They're they're using it. They're making it. <laughs> yeah, it's there. They're not showcasing it like we are. Yeah. Uh, who is it that jokes around and calls it like our breakfast whiskey? <laughs> mm. Oh, uh, well, uh, no, sounds about right though. Frank says that sometimes, but okay. I think we just soak some bacon in this. I think it'd be delicious soaked in this. Seriously, really and, um, biscuits. Oh like, yeah, you got it, mm. Kyle. Biscuits. You need to talk about your biscuit idea thing here because yeah, I, like, well, I feel like we should have brought that to the table today. Are y'all ready to try? I know y'all ready to try the single malt because that's the sure. one I. 
Yeah. Sure. We can do that. I want to do one quick thing. I will get our buddy at Pat, my whiskey dance says, how are we doing? We only did eight in an hour. Am I still behind you? Not today. I think we're only going to do six, but don't worry. We, we, we'll catch up later. <laughs> That's right. But yeah, if you guys haven't checked out my whiskey den, d definitely do there. Good guys. Always have some cool stuff going over there. Yeah, they do. And they're on right before us. So if you don't have anything to do for the hour before our right. show starts, stop on in over there. Central. Or nine, I guess oh. nine. Eastern. My cat is wishing he could have some bacon too. I already gave it's him a little bacon. <laughs> oh, Cat's see, John, bacon. last time we had feeling was that a great tealing taste at seven gram before the world ended. That's good, John. Before the world ended. <laughs> Fairly accurate statement, unfortunately. Which seven grand? Austin. Austin. That must have been a while ago. Yeah, he's well, yeah, he's seven for the world, it's uh, I assume so. Yeah. <laughs> it's a million years ago. Yeah. yeah. Seems like it. everything was a million years ago at that point. What's yep. a whiskey event? What's that? That's yeah. not virtual. <laughs> Seriously. Hey, hey don't make me come take that bacon back. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Stop the plane. Right. Um, you have a biscuit idea with the single malt? Okay. We uh, got, this, we this, this thing is awesome. So you got to tell us what, all about this single malt and what biscuit idea you have. So you got you to gotta understand, I started this job during quarantine. Like my, my hire date was the day of quarantine. So. Well, uh, he got hired and then the first day of the job was definitely. Yeah. My, yeah. Ooh. My actual like day, first day on the job was the uh, day of quarantine. So I've spent a lot of time at my house with a lot of tealing and um, bad day. Zoom meetings and stuff. So, so rough. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's really rough. So I like, oh. I've been sitting there in meetings, you know, drinking tealing out of a coffee cup, making it seem like I'm drinking coffee. And, I won't tell. I won't tell. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, um, the best pairing I've ever had, actually, it was like mind blowing to me. I had... Uh, the Teeling single malt uh, with a biscuit with raspberry jam on the biscuit. And to me, it was like the world's greatest pairing. I was like, I could sit here and eat this every day. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, good. Really good. Go make the biscuits. I can yeah, go make them. <laughs> We've got a two hour stream. I can probably. <laughs> it's absolutely delicious. And this is actually, uh, you know, one of my favorites of the lines. Um, this is absolutely probably one of Alex's uh least favorite to actually like take on um only he loves the juice but um it was kind of a pain it still is a pain in the butt for him um it's a logistical nightmare to age this in five different casks and mm -hmm. then be able to blend that together so he's doing uh, um port uh, five different wine casks port madeira sherry white burgundy and napa valley cab Wow. Oh, right. No wonder. That's yeah, awesome. he, has a lot of, um, he has a lot of appreciation for the guys in the warehouse. He's like, wow. if it wasn't for them, this is a team effort and we do this together. That's he kind of play that He goes in, he's like, you know what? Give me that white burgundy barrel in the back. And yeah, they're just like, real. destroying, <laughs> you know, moving oh everything gosh. and putting it back. But he's such a nice guy. I, I feel like yeah. he's probably like up there, like doing it with them, you know? <laughs> How many barrels do they have to roll around to get a batch usually approximately? Any idea? Oh, man. You know, we haven't been able to go to the distillery yet because no. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Corona. He, he did say it will take him a lot of times. It takes like four or five days just moving barrels around. Oh, cool enough yeah. to pull the right amount of barrels to start Jeez. the blending. Yeah. Uh, and then he said like the blending process in it itself is it? A, he said it's a two day process, right? Yeah, because, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, this Madeira cast tastes like this, but that Madeira cast is, you know, tasting like that. So it's 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 a it's a How feat. much of each one. Yeah, I can imagine. There's like no rhyme or reason exactly to it, but, all, you know, he was trying to get some consistency with that. Yeah. Uh, it's on, on the whiskey itself, when I taste it, I almost every single time I... I dive in to taste it. I almost taste something new each time. That's why I love it. Like I go in, I'm like, Ooh, white pepper. And I go back in and I'm like, Hmm, there's some like preserved strawberry there. And then I go back in and, and, and I get peaches. I just, it's one of those weird, uh, interesting whiskeys that I, I just get something new each time. Yeah. It's, yeah. I feel like it's, it's one that you can call equally complex yet approachable and mellow. 
just because mm -hmm. it melds so well, melts in your mouth so nicely. So good. And it's a shame that, you know, we can't put an age statement on it because it's aged in such a wide range. Like the youngest whiskey he thinks is about eight years old, but there could be whiskey from like 1991 in this. So it's really, really good. <laughs> Who is that? Violet agrees. Violet. It's Violet being angry and talking that Belle's going to die about her game. Did she just tell Belle she was going to die? Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> Gotta love sisterly love. <laughs> I love this single malt. Yeah, it's so rich and viscous and, and oily. oily. It's Imagine if you had some biscuits and jam with you right now. Biscuits yeah. and jam. Go make some biscuits. Is what you're hey, I think about. you guys have your uh, giving morning brunch already planned out. There you go. Biscuits. But I, I, I do agree. Matthew Parker, he, he mentioned grappa as a note, which I agree is definitely in there. And so, so, so many uh, tropical fruits in here. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, it, doesn't, Dodger, it doesn't hold a candle to the 24 year as far as tropical fruits goes, no. but they're in there. But yeah. And uh, what about like a homemade like peach jam, too? There's like a lot of peach mm. notes in there. And Ooh, that cinnamon mm. peach jam. Ooh. Uh, That'd be fun too. You know the honey you sent us, the ones that did make it. We might they, be able to use those. We really good yes, too. Yes, finally made it. I was like, I swear, I sent it here. <laughs> Two of them made it. The Some of them made it. I opened it. this like glass and honey leak over my mailbox. I'm like, awesome. Uh, just just made made it over over it. Was just with that, like that was the peak of all of this going on with the um the Jimmy Dodgers. All the people that deliver mail, <laughs> the mail. <laughs> The post office, that's the word I'm looking for. This yeah, is very so kind. I'm only on my third board. I'm not pouring it. I swear. <laughs> John says Jamie Dodgers. Yeah. yeah. I agree with Jamie Dodgers. And those are delicious. We can mm -hmm. thank Mr. Huey for those. Let's yeah, Jamie almost, Dodgers, almost taste the Jamie Dodgers in here. I would have never known about Jamie Dodgers if it wasn't for Nathan. Right. And his so sound class. Please share. Oh, it's just a type of, of cookie, essentially. Yeah. I like mm. a cookie with a um, little fruit a jam in the middle of them. Yeah. That's great, though. But, yeah, we were at Psalm uh, 1. There was a scotch called a Jammy Dodger, and Nathan Huey brought it. So then he brought Jammy Dodgers to taste it, and it was awesome. Oh, are those those, like, like pastries with the – Yes, it's, it's kind of a pastry, it, kind of a biscuit, kind of a cookie. I didn't get that. Uh. Could you try again? <laughs> is it a biscuit or a cookie? Siri was very yep. good. I have I changed mine to have a South African accent. <laughs> uh, Jason, I want to go as far as like a raspberry kolache. That's like too much of the bready mm -hmm. to it. It's it's more of a cookie than a biscuit. If you want to have that argument. In this in this situation, it absolutely is more of a cookie. Yeah, the sweetness to it. Yeah, versus the non sweetness to. Okay. Get some from West and then and then do it. Pair these with the best best kolache from uh, from West and see which one's the best with this whiskey. I think that'd be a really good fun project. Jason do does know about the kolaches from West. Um, I'm seeing a a comment from Matthew or a question. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I was curious about. Uh, what the influence uh, so he wants to know about the white burgundy I don't know exactly about the white burgundy but just to go back to the single grain for a little bit um, I do, I do. Uh, oh you do okay go ahead yeah. uh, so um, burgundy is uh, where they grow uh, Pinot Noir for red uh, but for their whites they um, are growing a whole lot of sommelier, uh and it is really really yummy yummy stuff um it's really, really bold and complex white uh, from Burgundy. So that's probably why they're choosing those is because they're really, really bold. And it's a lot of um, the fruit notes that we find in older it's Irish whiskeys um, are the same notes that you find in white Burgundies. So those peaches, those uh, melons, those, um, those are all things that are in white Burgundy. <laughs> Yeah, right on that, that. Yeah, your softer tropical fruits, your creaminess and stuff. Yes. Yeah. You get all that from uh, white burgundy. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely sounds feasible for sure. Um, as of the last time we talked with Alex, he has over 150 different casks that he works with. Wow. Nice. That's so, awesome. 
Yeah. Not, not really works right, plays with. He, yeah. he literally spends 30% of his time playing around, just, just innovating. Sounds like so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, right? The greatest yeah. job ever. But what I think is interesting is when they were going out in the beginning and looking for, you know, what they were going to do, they went to California and asked a, you know, asked a winery, like, Hey, you're done with this cast. Like you can't use it anymore. Can we, um, can we buy it from you? Gave it to them for like, I don't know. I think it was like 30 bucks or something. And they put some whiskey in it, tried it out. It was amazing. And what's really cool about it is that because, you know, a wine couldn't take on, more of the um the cast right but because it's a higher proof alcohol it was able to soak everything out and just gives it this like really beautiful i think like kind of tannic notes and i mean you're going to get that with this one too with the wine it just sort of like that's what i mean about layering it touches like every part of your tongue and gives you that experience and just sort of keeps making you want more <laughs> are you able to tell us what winery and or at least what area of california you're you're getting your winery your barrels from no not even area. No. <laughs> Napa Sonoma. No. Uh, on the lot of Virgin. <laughs> well, it's Napa Valley cab barrels. Uh, okay. So, okay. We are we're talking Napa. Yeah. We're talking Napa on the cab barrels. Okay. That's um, the only one you get. That's fair. I'll the, take it. Uh, a lot of, so a lot of it's for a lot of different reasons. Um, so wineries have so many different, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they're selling their bar barrels to so many different people. If they, you know, started putting their, letting people put their name on those barrels, then could potentially piss off some people that they sold to over here or whatever that they didn't get to. It's like a, it's like a whole thing. So yep. uh, for the most part, we, uh, they, they don't tell us much. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Let's try not to piss off as many people as we can. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the fucking lawyers. Let's be honest. <laughs> Yeah, it usually is. Yeah. When it out. I really enjoy this. The single malt is just quite, quite lovely. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the single grain was always the standout of the trilogy for me. And I think it's just because of the fact that I know that I'm, I know how much you like corn um, and you like. That's bourbon. changed a lot. Though. I know it has, but that's the one that we always purchased. But this is, this is standing out. Oh yeah. I like, I really this enjoy one. this one. I like it. I like that you called it trilogy instead of Trinity. I think we could just move it to that name instead. <laughs> That's the Star Wars in it. So. <laughs> there, there you uh, ben asked the about the room casks. Um, we're, you know, that's kind of one of those things too. We're not really talking about, but I do know in the beginning they were using plantation, mm. and um, we probably have a little bit of a cardi rum in there these days. Yeah. Yeah. He was saying though he has all kinds of rums, rum barrels now. So he's getting rum barrels from you know uh, basically all over the Caribbean. So Caribbean rum barrels, uh, and you know it really at this point is depending on you know where we can get them from versus what time of year to ship them over because that has a lot to play in getting those barrels to Ireland. And so uh, they're from all over. Yeah, one thing I find is interesting is people always ask me like, "What bourbon is is something aged?" And I'm like, then I get the opportunity to tell them about like the whole cool process of you know the guys putting the barrels back together and the the whole Olympics around it and and all that cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm like, well, we don't know because we're breaking them all down. They're shipping them over and we're putting them back together. Yep. That's a valid point. It could be multiple distilleries. Pop it doesn't really make any difference at that point. Yeah, exactly. What could be fun? I mean, I'm sure if you went to the ridiculous effort of putting them all back together from each of it would take forever. It's not worth it. Just from a time standpoint, going, well, this one came from this. So I mean, good gosh. It's like they throw them on a the boat, guys. They throw them together and say, yeah. make the barrels. <laughs> they show up as pallets. It shows, I'm going to ship them all put together. Yeah, across the uh, great question that uh, we'll be getting to. I was just about to say. Yeah, I was about to say. You want to answer in a few minutes, actually. So we'll hold that question until then. We'll get to you there, Matthew. Should, should we uh, taste a little bit of the pot still? Yeah, the pot still now. <laughs> sure. sure. <I like> it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Should we talk? No. <laughs> that one, the, the blue canister is cool. It stands out on the shelf. Yeah, it does. I don't, yeah, I it's like very that. cool to have this cool color on it. I just we like did a that. review on this one, didn't we, Matt? We did. We reviewed this one. We reviewed the single malt so far. As right. far as full reviews go, we haven't reviewed the other, I guess, the other. And we've done the 24-year single malt. We just haven't done the single or the small batch yet, or, of course, the new Black Pits. But we will. And this is this year of the, the small batch. There's not going to be a whole lot of difference, but, you know, he's always evolving and always changing and, you know, little by little. All right, so tell everybody what's, just in case they don't know what a pot still is in the first place. They're new to Irish whiskey because it's kind of important what this is. Yeah, so Kyle and I can do this together, but as I mentioned earlier, kind of the old school method of making Irish whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, they use 50% malted, 50% unmalted barley, and uh, this is triple distilled. And what I think is really cool is that we have, we're always like, we're staying true to the old fashioned ways, but always innovating and kind of making it this like fun new thing. We use a mixture of South African white wine yeast along with our distiller's yeast. Oh, okay. Very and you good. mentioned the pot stills. I, we do have a picture, don't we? Yes, we do. I always forget the name, but Kyle, maybe you can. I know one's Natalie. I was just looking that up because I do have the names of the stills. Natalie, yes, Natalie Rebecca. Natalie, Rebecca, and Alice. Alice. That's what yeah. And the fourth one is the no name. Those are all all of uh, Jack's daughters. So Jack Teeling, one of the brothers, uh, named each of those stills. Uh, so you can actually see one says Allison in that picture. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah. named all the stills. But yeah, those are uh, copper pot stills. There's yeah, Christ in it too. And Rebecca, yep. Yep. Nice. Excellent. There you go. Yeah, just to kind of bring back that point of, you know, it's the family's been making it for so long and we just – it's really, you know, Alex, I'm sure is considered part of the family and all everybody who works there. Stephen actually, uh, so at the, at that time, so Jack Teeling is one of the brothers, Stephen Teeling, the other one. So at the time Stephen, uh, didn't, uh, I guess he didn't have kids or they were just at that he didn't time. Have kids yet. He didn't have kids yet. And so now that he does have, uh, two girls he's uh named the first two barrels out of the distillery after his mm -hmm. daughter so there's uh zoe and and uh, holly yeah they're gonna have a hell of an 18th birthday yeah right to crack open their own barrel <laughs> hell yeah. yeah of 18 year old whiskey yeah, that's that's gonna, be amazing. They're gonna wait until they're cool. eight, they, can, they can legally drink i'm sure i'm I like sure it. that's exactly what's going to happen yes yeah. Well, they will definitely wait till eighteen. Of course, get to have that whiskey yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So these are not um, these are not worlds apart on the nose. No. Mm -mm. Since we're since we poured them back to back, I hadn't emptied my last glass yet, and they're 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 playing within the same kind of you know sport. It smells. I find that the pot still has this big floral brightness where the 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 single malt for me has more of a savory note. The the single malt is uh, leans more towards the the fruity too. Mm -hmm. I I get a same amount of like creamy note on both. Right. I get the, mm -hmm. the creaminess kind of trans Irish both. creamy that's just generally there. I'm getting more of a bready note mm -hmm. on the one that we just poured the single pot still. Okay. Uh, which cool. I guess is it makes makes a little bit of sense. Uh, but I'm getting more of that. Irish note on this one. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's also cool is this. So this is the first whiskey that was made at the distillery. That's right. Com like a hundred percent. So this is five-year-old whiskey and we use um, uh, Oregon pine wooden washbacks and uh, stainless steel washbacks. So that's also going to deliver like a different type of layering with each, with each fermentation there. I find it very unique. Uh, and I was actually talking to a local brewer here in Dallas a couple of weeks ago about how he was talking. He has a couple of friends of his that are whiskey makers, actually. And he was talking to them about the brewing process and how um, he realized that, 
you know, not, not everyone knows too much about like brewing beer and how that can transcend. Cause once you distill there, there's some people that feel like, you know, you're, you're getting rid of a lot of flavor components that you, you deal with during that brewing process, if you will. So, um, you know, there, there's something to be said about someone that like takes that, that background of brewing beer and holds just as much, um, flame to what they're doing in the first part of it as they do on the last part of it. Cause you know, there's, you know, a lot of the flavor components come from, you know, the distillation process the, to the maturation process, um, or the maturing process. And, uh, it's cool to see him spend so much time on that first part of it. Um, I mean, whiskey yeah. being only three parts, it's, it's yeah wood or four, if you want to include wood, but I mean, it's water, yeast and, and some sort of grain. You always got to include wood. So, it, you know, every single aspect of that is incredibly important. And the people that really spend a lot of time delving into each one of those things, I feel like just make better products in the long run. What we have found so far. And even so much, I mean, definitely, you know, we use malted barley from like the, from Ireland. So it's from South Central Ireland. So it's also important, you know, they, as a, as a company and a family, they're very into helping out their local community. And that's why they bring up like the whole, I mean, I'm wearing the, the Phoenix rising. Uh, that's kind of the, the rising from the ashes. They do a lot for the local community too. Um, they actually released something when the pandemic started, um, a whiskey that, what was it, Kyle? I think it like, it's still, it was like auctioned off or they, they sold it within like 15 minutes or something. All yeah, it, all it was a, to local responders. It was a specialized bottle. Then they, they auctioned off and, um, they, I think they auctioned off like, uh, it was like a thousand bottles, maybe, maybe just a hundred bottles, but they, um, they auctioned them off and yeah, they, they got like a yeah, we haven't. Uh, our, our buddy Brian uh, over at Kilco uh, pointed out to me we haven't really been talking price point too much on these. Uh, could we go back through real quick on the small batch? What are what are our, what is our MSRP? I know you guys can't control what retailers actually charge, but forty ish on the small batch. On the single grain. Sorry, so, I mean, go ahead. I have written down. So it's, it's fifty five oh. for the single grain. It's about fifty for the single malt. Same yeah, forty-five to fifty-five, and then it's about basically five bucks up on each one. Okay, from 40, 45, 50, 55. And then we jumped up again for the pot still. Yeah, yeah, pot still. The last place I was at was like fifty-three dollars. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I I like this. I remember enjoying mm -hmm. it during our review, but I'm in, I'm enjoying it even more now. I know. I think the I think the most fun thing is that South African white wine yeast just really like, like what? <laughs> it's a totally random thing to grab. Who always needs South African white wine yeast? I mean, that's what I always use. Uh, yeah. I have like tons of it in my cabinet. Well, <laughs> that kind of like goes back to their. I mean, if you look at how many distillers are really just u sure. using brewers yeast or right. distillers yeast. Um, the vast majority of people are just using distillers yeast because right. you know they, they don't really feel like there is any flavor components that come from that. And then there are people that feel like there's a lot of flavor components that come out of using a different yeast strain. I think it makes a big difference personally, yeah. yeast, but uh, you know, whatever. Those people sell sorts of stupid things that are wrong, but it's fine. <laughs> All about the little details. People are allowed to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love this one. This one's like, I mean, even the color is gorgeous on this mm -hmm. as well. Actually, since it's now been open for, I guess, for several months now, it's improved even more since yeah. we had it last time we've had it. Oxygen I think so too, Matt. It's gotten actually significantly more flavorful, so which is great. I also want to say uh, hi to ADHD Whiskey, Matt. How's it going? If you guys haven't checked, I think he's almost at like 10,000 subs now. So. It's hey, awesome. Matt. Cheers to that. I need some more of this at this point. Oh, see, I was about to clean out and go to a new one. Thank you, Matt. line, Kyle. Someone was asking about that. I Sorry, do what? Someone was asking if pot still is a part of the international core line. Uh, I 
so they technically haven't added to the core line because uh, they didn't really know what the demand was going to be when we released it. Um, but I feel like that we're leaning towards the era of it joining the core line. So are we it, talking about the pot still? Or are we talking about the new one? The okay. question was about the pot still. Okay. Um, was- and Donald said it was there. They're both in uh, Canada. So, I mean, I guess Donald will probably know since he's the I could, Irish Yoda. Yeah. I can text one of our Canadian coworkers and ask, but I don't know if he would know. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those things, again, uh, we've, uh, what is this, the uh, second or third time it's been released now? We're still learning, you know, we're still figuring but, uh, out. Uh, still, so they're still trying to find out what the demand is, mm-hmm. uh, versus what we can actually accomplish in, at the distillery, since this is, you know, the first of our core line 100% coming out of uh, the distillery that was just built in 2015. So, uh I, I have a feeling though it's going to lean that way um, to being part of the core line. So we've, we've had a great uh, turnout of you know, lovers of this, this product. I can understand that. I know it's, it's just, you know, it's so different, but also so old school. It's also just about, you know, Irish whiskey is the fastest growing category yet, you know, people are still hesitant and they're still needing to be you know, educated on it. So it's just getting the people to try it and be like, what? Didn't expect this. That's, That's the, the hardest part, of, for taste things, the part of any, I think whiskey journey is, is getting, getting that, getting people to put it in their glass and try it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Once you can do that, especially if you're standing there talking to them. Yeah, you can yeah. you can make them find, you can make them find whatever you're you want them to find. Yeah, exactly. we were talking a little bit before we went live. You said there is one of these that you guys have in circulation for the mini bottles for sale, uh, small batch. Okay, so it's you know if people happen to find it at their liquor store. There's a good way to try right there. Yeah, um, not a lot of distilleries do that. I think more should. I know the cost effectiveness of it, but. It's it's mostly the distributors don't want them yeah. to do it for the cost that would make them money, right? Mm-hmm. I get it, but you're more likely to sell more actual yeah. bottles. If you, get your you guys have some up there, right? Yep. So yeah, so you can probably find it there. Um, um, the the pretty- other hard part about the minis is liquor stores. A, a lot of times when you're looking at the higher end uh, whiskeys, when you look at the mini bottles, they're there's a lot of when you go to liquor stores. There's a lot of 99 banana in minis. Right. Not a lot of nicer stuff. So it, it is. It can be sometimes hard to get um, liquor stores to pick up those mini bottles because yeah. they want something at a at a lower price point of those. So it, it's a challenge all over. Right. So I'm just saying, I've paid fourteen dollars for a Macallan tiny bottle just because I wanted to try that Macallan, and I didn't. I yeah. sure as hell wasn't going to pay the nine hundred dollars for it. Or, Right. Yeah. And also it kind of depends on what region you are in. Right. Chicago has a lot of the mini bottles. Okay. And they yeah. have the little Trinity packs that are just like the, the three mini bottles that we have. Mm. Um, if anyone's in Houston, I'm going to be doing an event with uh, OST liquor next month. That should be pretty fun. And they're going to have the mini bottles, but we don't have any in central Texas. Mm. That's yeah. blue. But, but yeah, you, North Texas, you do. So maybe Kyle. You go, Kyle, do you any, do you know where anybody can get those? Or yeah, so I know that the mini small batches. Uh, there's a there's a local kind of boutique liquor store actually at Willow Bend Mall um, called Crafted. They they have the little mini bottles of small batch currently. Ooh. If anyone's out in that area, Plano ish. Mm. Yeah. But the best thing just to come to a tasting, like when we've had tastings, that of course with COVID that's impossible. But when there are tastings, that's the easy way to get people to find to uh, try new things, and they go buy a lot more whiskey. And we find that after the event, they're like, "Look how many bottles I just bought." You're an asshole. I'm like, sorry, uh, good whiskey makes makes friends, and then you get to buy more whiskey for your house, and then you convert them to Irish and Scotch and other things they would never drink previously, and it's hilarious. And another great thing to do is become friends with uh, your brand about. Oh wait, this way. 
your brand ambassador. Yeah. See, it's different. It's, yeah. Your brand That's ambassador. Awesome. So like I have a, um, I have uh, we've now again looking at the COVID world of how do we outreach to people during this time. Um, so uh, next month I'm actually doing a whole uh, happy hour uh, training and just a fun filled cocktail class with a, um, a tech company. And we're, you know, there's like 30 people in this tech group that, uh, you know, it's completely outside of our normal realm of like bars and restaurants and whiskey clubs. These, you know, this is just a, you know, I'm, I'm doing another one that's an architecture uh, company. So I'm reaching out to other companies and, and offering happy hours and, and Zoom classes for their uh, staff. So, you know, becoming friends with a brand ambassador is always nice. We send, yeah, exactly. We send you free whiskey and then get, and then we talk about it. So you I might open it up. Huh? I was just talking to Mike Cook. He's uh, yeah. He said now is a better time than any to open up his little thing he got for Christmas last year. Yeah, yeah, yes. it's a good time. Let us know what you think. You should open all of them. We, yeah. we need to see your notes at the end of them all. Speaking of the mini sets and stuff, we were provided with these, right? Mm -hmm. So this is awesome. It came with these mini. Is this something that's going to be available for people, or is it something that's a promo specific? pack? That, it's a that, promo pack, or you made that just for uh, just for y'all? Wow, really? So we okay, should so just feel super kind special. of, yeah. It's not for sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was basically for for special peeps, but not, was, just, like, not everyone yeah. listening is not there. You guys are all special. <laughs> <laughs> it was a one off thing that we we created. I would nice. definitely go to your peeps and be like, you should push this because, you know, yeah, Looks you got so the tools out there, but you got a little extra something special in there for peeps. You could do it with the, you know, pot still instead, or, you know, mm -hmm. that would probably, you know, that gets you out there more because people get to try out all of them. Yeah. Your favorite one, go buy the big bottle and keep buying it. It, there are select markets that do the Trinity pack and they do minis of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we have any here in Texas, unfortunately, but I um, uh, Chicago, are, has, I'm saying about like Chicago, Chicago has some of the mini pack. Has them in some places. I'm like, oh. it's just random, but I, I agree. I, I love that packaging when they, yeah, it yeah, it. yeah. Thankfully we've been living the two of us this evening off of one of them. Thank you for supplying both of us with one because that one will be put aside for a while. Yeah. Hey, special. I yeah. want to move on to something really. I, 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 I know I don't anything about this, so I want to know all about peated black pits, and I'm very excited to drink this. Oh, we yeah. have to talk about it. Peated whiskey in Dublin. Yep. It's um, so it's triple distilled, of course. And it starts off at a 55 ppm with heat. And after it's distilled, it goes down to 15. So this is perfect because one of the tasting notes we get is bacon. So, yeah. I smelled it. It's it's not for me really for this based off the smell, but I'm gonna go ahead and continue drinking my single drink. Take a, take a tiny sip first, let it coat your mouth. Let's talk about it. Ooh. And then take the next sip. I don't want to shit on your whiskey. <laughs> I don't like Pete. <laughs> I love Pete. Don't worry. Me and Will will love it. It's fine. <laughs> I'll take a sip just for you. Uh -huh. So uh, um, one of one of Alex's point. big notes on this is it it's not like so bonfire smoke Pete. No. It's more of your mm. barbecue uh pete you know your barbecue meat kind of pete and that's kind of where you're getting that that bacon note a little bit too i can get behind that that part of it but it still has that yucky band-aidy taste that i don't like there's there's a medicinal note that, that medicinal hits mid palate and then it swells i, uh, I can get I behind the barbecue the bacon and whatnot I, I can i can get that on that side of it but there's no. also the other Teresa, don't don't even go there, girl. You know better. Three stick. Right. So is this Irish um, peat that you guys are using in it, or is it Scottish peat? Do you know? I feel like they told us that. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, I think it, it is Irish peat. 
It okay. is. Yeah. I'm like, I think it's really cool. Cool. Sorry, I'm trying to finish my bite. It is Irish Pete. Oh, yeah, he did say that. Really? Do you any idea where in Ireland it's coming from? Just approximately? It's no. coming from the black pits, obviously, behind the <laughs> <laughs> So confident, I would go black pits. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best answer ever. I remember mean, your own show. You used to be like on a reality show. <laughs> <laughs> I have been told that before. a few times. Oh, <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> it just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> more and more that you drink. <laughs> so, um, there you go. the <laughs> the barrels you're working on this one. Uh, so two thirds of our barrels are going to be uh, ex bourbon casks, and then one third are going to be sauterne casks on this one. So we do yeah. a little bit of that sauterne wine uh, barrel on on the black pit. Yeah, so it's kind that of doesn't really help soften it. I'm sorry. Kind of similar to the 24 and just like a more authentically like raw way. That's what they were kind of raw way. Raw way. I don't know. Stop. Now I'm on a roll. Just don't 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 do okay. this. Okay. So <laughs> why is it called black pits? What does black pits mean besides your armpit? <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, Irene. So it actually is um so the Liberties is where the distillery is. And then there's mm. this area behind the Liberty is called the black pits. Okay. And there's a sign that said black pits on like a gate and they just were inspired by it. And that's where they got the idea. And it looks okay. like cool. this. It's a really, I love the bottle. Like it's, it's a really cool looking bottle. Yeah. It's a pretty so bottle. When is it going to be on the, actually on the market? To After January. the new year, like January. After new year. <laughs> yeah. Very and is cool. it going everywhere or is it, uh, just over there. It's here. Oh, it's here. No, you can get yeah, in there. It's gonna hit here in January. Excellent. Nice. Awesome. So yeah, this is just a preview of what's coming. Um Sorry, we, we don't know exactly what people will start selling it in in stores for, but right now the suggested retail price uh is uh seventy like low seventy, seventy four. So not bad. Yeah. It smells really good. And it is like a uh, like a turf type peat that's um a little like the way they were explaining it is that it gets like from a bog and it's alive still and it's just like this like moss basically like peat moss is alive but the way I've seen it in Scotland is a little bit different. Okay. It's so. quite delicious. I know that much. I really enjoy the hell out of it. That's really good. It's kind of like a combination of like Lafroig and Argbeg. So it's got mm -hmm. the iodine and the meaty notes. That's really interesting. I really like that. And it's still the 46 along the same lines as the rest. Yep. Oh, Ben wants to know if you're going to be at Austin Shaker in 12 days by chance. Uh, she'll be at Austin Shaker tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Um, you mean the 12 days of Christmas? I don't know what they're doing yet. They're still trying to kind of figure it out. So I've been there the last two years, but I don't, I don't know. I got to talk to Dave and Kiki. Mm. But so go tomorrow. You might be there. Is that what you're asking? I guess. And he wants to, I don't know. Sorry. Austin Baker is like a really awesome liquor store in Austin, obviously. And they do these um, 12 days of Christmas and it, it's tastings and it's a really fun time. But obviously, like, they're not a store that's doing tastings right now. So they're still trying to sort out what they're going to do. There's okay. only a handful that are. So Jason from the Mash and Drum is asking um, Sweet Pitted Whiskey, you would equate it to. Uh, I don't think as peated as Port Charlotte. Yeah, it's not as peated as. Port it's not as big as Port Charlotte, um, but it's not as light as Kalila. Right. Yeah. Mm. It's all poop. You know it's what? Bigger, it's bigger than Connemara. Yeah, it's definitely more than that. Yeah. I'm thinking it's That's more like uh, more like Lagavulin, sweeter mm -hmm. peat wise. Like a light Lagavulin in a way. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. 
I'm really impressed with this. I really like this. I need a full bottle, please. That would be great. I don't even know that I go right Lagavulin. This is going to be my last bit. This is good. Teresa said Budahaben. No, uh, it's more peated. Budahaben's not peated enough. No, yeah, we've yeah, had the, some peated ones that have been. Yeah, but I've smelled the Budahaben, and that's more peated than it. Yeah. So yeah. it always has this, like, it's, it's fruitier, like, it's hard for me to kind of even think of what to compare it to because it does have that like light barbecue, like the black adder mat to it, like fruitiness to it, like almost like you know, papaya kind of way about it without still got that Irish to it. Mm. Yeah. This reminds me of, of, of a non cask strength, maybe black adder raw cask. Oh, I haven't had the Belvini Peat Week. That was in vintage 20, uh, 2003 from Matthew Parkson. I, 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 I never had it either. We can play games to see which one's the closest to. Why don't you go find it, Matt? I, mean, <laughs> I can do that, but, you know, it's whatever you guys want to do. Might go back I do to have – I know exactly where it is. <laughs> oh, do you? I actually know where that one is. Do I know exactly where the 2003 is and the 2002 vintages. I'm surprised you're still sitting there. Yes. I, I, I don't I know. Last time I had Pete Week, I was drunk and I was okay with it. Problem's going to be we're going to pull out all the Pete and we're going to figure out what this is. Only reason yeah, why I was okay. <laughs> Let's see. I would say this is closest probably to a Connemara plus a Lagavulin. That was the end of my sample. I, I really I, think that I'm going to make it. <laughs> This one here is lucky and happy that I don't drink it. Yeah, can I get two bottles? Yeah, I know. So I, I know. Like, I don't know. That's okay. Maybe I just want to share this with you. Ooh, that's a really shitty thing to do. He tried I'm to hide it. A little bit. That's really messed up. I gave him. I gave him six uh, tasting kits. Y'all only got two. <laughs> so messed up. Hey, you know what? With the amount of whiskey this man gives me, he can keep whatever he wants to for himself. I am. Yeah, and I think since last time, like our collection over here on the side oh, just has just silly. grown so much and needs to be moved with the rest of the collection over there. I, That's I, your I job this week. Move the whiskey it, samples. If it's what I think it is. Oh, what I wrote down about this? Bed. Is that it's edgy and transparent <laughs> in comparison to like the 24 year? If you've had that, like where it has some of the same notes and same um, aspects of it, but it's a little edgier. I think the nose on this is my favorite part. Yeah, I'm just gonna single grain. That is all on. I finally realized your shirt is uh, Harry Potter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not well, always. Not always, but not always. Sometimes it's it's Star Wars, but I do like Harry Potter a lot. The castle is right there behind me, and the Legos. I see that. Yeah, I like Harry Potter. Have you seen the uh, the Harry Potter notepad thing? The book. They like well. Well, the paper. Yeah, you you as you, you rip the paper, it, it turns it, into it, like the, the castle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want I want that. I wouldn't even use the papers. I'd just rip it all away to have the castle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> paper. <laughs> I'm really close now. Yeah. yeah. What, do you, what do you got? What do you, so you got? Far? He's so far. Ardbeg, Lafroy, and and Lagavulin. I need Talisker. I think I'll have it. <laughs> are Are you blending them? Yes. Sugar cat uh sugar kitty said that's not a castle. <laughs> it's a cat jungle gym. <laughs> um <laughs> Harry Potter drinks Ardbeg. <laughs> Harry Potter's not old enough to drink Ardbeg. <laughs> he is now. He is now. Um actually the cats don't really jack with the castle. Mm -mm. Uh one of them tries to eat the Lego sometimes and rip it apart, but not very not often. Really. So well, and, and Harry Potter can drink all the Ardbeg he wants. As long as they didn't try to make Sarah drink it. Well, he doesn't try and, yeah. Yep. I see the cat back there all the time. I yeah, hate to admit it, but I have, like, no idea about Harry Potter at all. I <laughs> 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 kind of mentioned it. I'm like, what is a Hufflepuff? Me. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, um, Sugar Kitty, the cat's back here all the time because I feed him bacon up here. 
and that cat is actually named Harry. So <laughs> I'm gonna okay. go because yeah. he's been sleeping the whole night. He hasn't had any bacon yet. I just feel bad for him. I think I got it. Probably sleeping with his kid. Mm -hmm. What is it? So it's Lefroy, Ardbeg, Lagavulin, and Talisker put together. That makes it. It's that's really good. That's a whole whole lot there. That yeah. seems like a lot of beef. Right? Seems, seems like a lot of work. They they could more expensive. <laughs> yeah, it seems more expensive than this one bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, Probably, but still tastes delicious. Or you could just, you know, wait until after the new year and I just wanted to do it for fun. Well, there is that. I do understand that. I, I do enjoy blending things for the hell of it, just to see how close you can get. <laughs> but yes, this is an awesome product. Um, I can't wait till this comes out. This is fantastic. Yeah, Rachel. You've seen it here well, first. Though. So obviously, you guys are only five years old. So is this your own guys' stuff in this thing, or is this still got some of the other? This is all yours. Mm -hmm. All ours. Yeah. All so oh, it's quite interesting. So again, so this is coming out of the distillery. So okay. it's pop still. So when you're running heat through the pot, still, obviously the steels will pull some of that flavor. So they actually, he just continuously runs it until you no longer have any of that peat note and then okay. them. so each, so the first batch of it, is going to come out a lot heavier peated by the time we're done with it. It's uh, through multiple runs of this product. Okay. Where you get to where there's no peat on it and that, you know, and then after it ages, we're getting to that, um, you know, that's how it starts at 55 PPMs and goes down to 15 by the end. Yeah. Well, the trick of the still too. And it and yeah. unlike the pot still where it's fifty percent malted, fifty percent unmalted, this is all malted barley. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Look the single malt. Awesome. Yeah, that's. Ooh, that's gonna be fun to stick in a blind and jack with people. <laughs> are you are you using one hundred percent malt in this malt? Yes. Okay. Yep. Nice. 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 I, I enjoyed the heck out of it. I'm looking forward to buying a bottle. Yeah, your breast smells now. Me too. And I find that, like, the first time I had it, I had to kind of, like, obviously I'm only having, like, a little bit at a time. But, the like, the revisit of it, it's, like, I like it more each time that I experience it. You know, you get more more to it each time. Yeah. Yeah, it's only going to get better, with especially with a, with a full-size bottle and then some oxidation. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be oh, ridiculously yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope so. like it definitely has that like sort of medicinal character to it, which I enjoy quite a bit. Um, I know we're talking about Irish whiskey, but you guys tried Altmore with me. It kind of reminds mm -hmm. me of the Altmore, where it's really like delicate but mm -hmm. robust in the same sense. That's how I think this one really translates. Yeah. Yeah. See what happens when you sleep through with Monday night. You get a lot less. <laughs> I really hope you didn't jack up your palate for the 24 with that peat. Mine's going to be nice and fresh. Do you think I'm going to care? <laughs> I've been 24 with you guys. So we're just like, I mean, I bet people in the chat have some 24. That's quite possible. We'll just have some more of our um, other whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. The Altmore 12. I, uh, I, don't, I, yeah. think I, have some. I have to drink some of that. If we're going to mention it, we might as well get some out and try it. <laughs> might as well. If you have a collection like Matt, you can't say a whiskey name without going ahead and grabbing it. Well, I mean, well, I'd love to hear what you what you think as far as the comparison goes. Like, yeah, that's I don't want to pull it. So. But... Nice, Ben. Ben's got his twenty four open. Ooh, Ben. Nice. Come on over. You're right over. <laughs> Give us right? a little more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? Yeah, I don't care. I'm gonna show up. What do you got? I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out the What the fuck you pulling out? Something from the bag. Who knows? Lagavulin. Because I want to compare two. 
Hmm, you're right. It is that same kind of style in the Altmore. I was not the heated part. Thinking the Star Wars. Yeah, that what, same oiliness and the freshness of it. Yeah, that really is. Yeah. Yes, I had the same, like, I, I thought of it because I had the same experience when I had all mm -hmm. the first time. I, was like, I don't know for sure about this, but I, I'm, there's something interesting about it. And then the next time I had it and the time after that, and it's one of my favorites now. And I feel the same way about this. Did the cat just wink at me? <laughs> Probably. Uh, Probably. That cat will show you all sorts of things you don't want to see as well. Because that cat's been known to do God knows what on camera. Yeah, he's not shy. He's not shy. He doesn't, make, he doesn't care what he shows you. Is that the Kola? The I can never say that one. The Kola. Kalala. Kalala. Yeah, yeah. I can never say. No, that. it's a Lagavulin Distillers Edition, but this is the the bottle that has lasted the longest amount of time in our house. This was the first special bottle of whiskey that my wife bought me. I want to say three and a half years ago, four years ago for my birthday, and I still have a little bit left. I've better, been nursing it. Better put that in a smaller bottle. Right there. Yeah. Well, I don't open it often. It's <laughs> true. That happened one time. I was I was saving this whiskey, and I had it. It had just oxidized so much. I was like, "Oh God!" So oh sad. no. Yeah, that's the that's the downside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the worst is if a cork um, <laughs> shrinks. And then yeah. It's like thanks. I don't even know you had any of that left. It's not my job to keep track of the uh, peated whiskeys in the house. No, it's not. Yeah. They're delicious. We, a lot of, we have a lot of Canada friends up in here, huh? Yeah, yeah. we have a lot of Canadian viewers. We, we yes, appreciate we Canada and all their awesome viewers from there. Nice. We appreciate amazing can Canadian whiskey as well. We just they would just share with us. They would share it with us. Share it with us. Hi, buddy. Mm. Hi, I can't blame them for not. Uh, yeah, because like, okay, so Donald I mean, was on. He has the, I think, the chestnut cask. Have you guys ever had that one? I never have, but I heard it's really amazing. Yeah, I've, I've heard nothing but good things about it. I want to try the pineapple one that came out, the pineapple tealing cask, the plantation pineapple. pineapple. I, I was telling you about that before she jumped on that plantation one's one. Oh, okay, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We need to try that too. We need to find all. See, that's the hard part is like, you know, every. Country only gets certain whiskeys. You don't get all the cool ones. Like send us all of them. I want to try them all. Oh, Teresa, if I could, I would, and I'd probably stay. See, <laughs> free place to stay in Canada. That's what I heard. So, the Lagavulin is is very much different, but the peat journey and the peat notes in the Lagavulin are very very similar to the peat notes that you guys have in yours. Surprisingly enough, this is quite a bit fruitier. What do you, why do you think that that is? Like, as far as like what you know about that whiskey? I don't know. You think what's sweeter? The, the log uh, of well, yeah, I don't know if you knew that kind of, like, I just don't know exactly how it's made and like why it might be similar in, in that. Uh, it's got a wine finish on it. I don't remember which it one. Does. It does. The, the distiller's edition has a, a, quite a few different wine finishes to it. Um, so I think that has, that's playing a part in the fruitiness. Um, in, in both of the whiskeys, but again, the, the peat journey and the amount of medicinal, the amount of bacon, the amount of all of the different things that kind of play into what peat can be is very, very similar to the Lagavulin. Oops. Ben wants to know if there are more store picks coming to the U.S. There's a like a here, Calvados. Oh, that's the one you shared with me, Ben. That thing was fantastic. Store picks, yay! Okay. No info. Yes. yes, I know. Uh, Total has something special. There, there are store picks coming. Good. Yeah. Yay! Good. Very, very good. I would like yeah, to. Know I story. believe they be hitting Texas like this week. Yeah. Ooh. If you know my phone number and text me, I might tell you what store. But you hey, have to Matt. Text me now. I'm going to text you right now. I'm literally like grabbing my phone and texting Matt. <laughs> Who's going to get to it? Like, we can't tell you on the stream, but if you text me, I can tell sent. you. Mine's already sent. I don't know what you're still talking about. The best about. I can do for you. And I'll, I'll respond after the stream, guys. <laughs> I'll respond yeah. during it. Yes. 
That's fair. That's fair. Uh, all right. All right. Yeah, well, obviously, you know, obviously, I haven't tasted any of that that's coming in. So I'm excited to try it myself when it hits us. Absolutely. Me too. So the, the Gallo okay, if you guys try the Galloway Bay series, they're awesome, awesome. The stout cast is the best stout finish which he's ever had. Nice. You guys ever had nerd by chance? Nope. There are so many I don't uh, know, but that sounds great. Spent, things. He spent 30 percent of his time innovating and playing with different stuff. So we uh, Alex Casco puts out a lot that of innovation. And I think we're back now. The vast majority that we actually don't receive over here. Um, but they don't waste I, their time even telling us about it. They're like, you yeah, guys they're, they're they're all we about what you have there. <laughs> I find out from them because I join a lot of teeling Facebook groups. And so, like, I, that's how I find out about like all the stuff that like comes out. I'm like, oh, that'd be cool to have. <laughs> yeah. Maybe after We're, COVID, we'll get to we'll get to go over there and and try it all. It's good to know that at least uh, you know, the insiders don't always get all of the good stuff too. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, we don't get any of this stuff. <laughs> so this COVID is, has really is put being a, a whiskey a tuber the way to go. What's that? Is being a whiskey tuber the way to go? Because I get a whole bunch of great stuff. I think you guys are winning. I, I mean, I get I get cool boxes sent for yeah, you. Yeah, like, all yeah. sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, I mean that's what's up, right? Get a bunch of people to to care what you're saying, and then people will come and give you whiskey. <laughs> I'm okay I mean, with this. I'm okay with this. I love it. So, uh, what are you guys drinking? So, are you guys gonna like tease us and talk about the 24 year, which would be excellent because I've had it before. I'm just it was so long ago. We lost uh -oh. Matt. How did we lose Matt? I thought we he was kind of like, we like kind of uh, in and out. Um, we could drink without him. We could drink. We could drink <laughs> Teelan Twenty Four without him. That's possible. No. I, I had a really clean year, Maybe three weeks ago or so. Mm -hmm. I had the the, the Twenty Four year. You did where? Lights out. So it was actually during the whiskey blitz we had, where we're like hitting all the stores and. Um, uh, sold in a bottle of actually the Teeling, what was it? Teeling 48 year into the store. And because Texas is out of the 24 year, and uh, for celebration, um, one of our Bacardi guys, Jason, brought he uh brought out the 24 year from his car. And oh, Jason, he's the best. Nice. It was delicious. That, that's all turned finished on on that whiskey is just sublime yeah i had it before i really knew what i was drinking so it's kind of a bummer yeah yeah we didn't know that we were going to be getting to experience the 24 when julian was there was there until he whipped it out before everybody started getting there and we tried it and then later on he shared mm -hmm. but ben was actually there that evening and he had brought a little sample and i got to try it before that all went down anyway so you got the double you got, got the, the double, double 24 double dose of the 24 actually triple if you can triple dose <laughs> yeah because then i showed up and got the the 24 because i was not uh, so that was a nice surprise yeah to get to try that it was so good i i kept pouring myself so, um, yeah, um, yeah. Like, looking around, like, oh, you're all talking, okay? <laughs> Just oh, yeah. And I remember Julian was very, very generous and was uh -huh. was incredibly. He was just nice like, I just want to keep a little of this for myself, and right. You know, the rest is <laughs> the rest is you know meant to share. Meant to share. So yeah, that and, was nice. And that he did. Uh, it was it was glorious. Oh yeah, I had a whole liquor bag when I came to the house that time, and it like we went through all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that cool bag. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I wonder if the 24 is still over at Williams. You still got that bottle on the I shelf. remember having to talk you down from trying from from buying a bottle after that night. Yeah. Hey, yeah. that's what I mean, that's what we want, right? Like that's four hundred four hundred dollars at the time was uh, you know, a bit of a stretch. A little a little steep <laughs> at that moment <laughs> that in moment our life. Five, so uh, four hundred is a great price for a twenty four year old best single malt in the world. It really you know, is. But, I can't, yeah, I can't I mean, argue with that. Four hundred dollars, no matter which way you cut it. But yep. yeah, but I mean, you know, different time. Different time. Yeah. Different. You know, 
who knows if he still has it there or not. I bet it is. Be a really great Christmas present. Would it? <laughs> For <laughs> where is this? She's talking about over at Mirage, Mirage. Fine Spirit. Oh and, yeah, uh, I love that. Uh, last couple of times we've been over, there's been is a bottle. So. Is it Willie or what's his name? William. William. Yeah. William and Henry are the owner and operator. I might need to go buy a bottle. It's, uh, Don't buy that bottle. Find <laughs> it this week, and then when you come down here with Cat, bring it along. Yeah. <laughs> Want to split it? But then who gets to keep the pretty bottle? Mm. 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 That's a tough one. Hi, Weezy. Matt's having some issues, it looks like, still over there. He's trying. But, uh, he might be joining us here again soon. Yeah. He's in the back room right he's, now. He's so in the back. I'm going to give him a couple more seconds before we Rip decide into... to hey. move on without I don't it. know what's wrong with it, but it's totally You're all, up. You're all grainy and stuff. And I don't know if it's, all awesome. it's, it's something like, I don't know what happened. Something's totally screwed up now. Ian said to tell your kids to stop streaming Netflix. Yeah, right? Quit uh, using up all the Wi-Fi. Do you have an Ethernet I, cord? I made them cut everything off. I made them cut all their stuff off. So mean. Yeah, we had an Ethernet cord and connect directly in now because of that. So Yeah, we had we had issues on a couple of streams, so we figured this would be the safest way. Well, unfortunately, the laptop doesn't take an Ethernet cord. Oh, it's time for a new laptop. <laughs> yeah, you're still really grainy and stuff, but but we can hear you just fine. Luckily, your your Yeti mic is is working fantastically. Right. <laughs> Stop it, the audio. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but something like I, something must have happened in the neighborhood or something because it just went to crap, which has never happened previously. No. No. Too much art bag always does that to me. <laughs> and now he's gone again. Yeah. Well, boo. So I guess we should probably go ahead and pour, pour some tealing without him. Some, pour some tealing without him. We have 30 minutes left in the live, so we we got to get to the tealing. We can't, we can't not talk about the tealing 24 year. <laughs> it would be irresponsible to our viewers to not talk be a disservice. about the internet 24 year. Oh, his internet connection. All right, so Matt might be having issues with his actual home internet connection. Yeah, it looks better now. Um, let's see, we got a question here. Is this one clean? This one is clean and has been waiting for the twenty-four. Heard that? It's <laughs> a question from Donald. There, uh, I have not. Not not familiar with that series. Donald, tell us about it. Yeah, <laughs> Donald, would you like me to send you the link? You can come on in, man. You can you can take Matt's place. Yeah, I mean, did did Matt already send you the wit link? I didn't hear about that. Huh? Oh, I just said I'd be excited to hear about. Uh, that. Yeah, I mean, let me see if he wants the link, and I can forward it to him. Love bacon. Oh he my is, goodness! This he is, is what so we call much fruit. Then come on in, Donald. Tell us about it. Tell us about all the things that we don't get over here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Matt's going to restart his Wi-Fi. Let's see if that helps. So tell us about that 24. <laughs> Tropical fruit bomb. Oh, God. Papaya and mango and guava. Mm -hmm. Nectarine. I smell pineapple. Coconut. Oh, Jesus. This is so rich and deep. I love old whiskeys. I love the nose of old whiskeys. I, I feel like I could spend... Let me go ahead and rephrase that. I love the I love old whiskeys that aren't always bourbon. <laughs> okay, well, that's fair. Uh, you'll see in our next set of reviews that we have coming out, mm -hmm. um, we tasted a rather old bourbon. It was oh, not... Yeah. Pleasant smelling as this. I can Yo. I can tell you that. This is like well, it's I interesting with the climate being old. You know, like if it's over in a colder climate, that's going to be so different. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, if it's the if it's what was that? It was Kyle trying to find me in a weird face. No, <laughs> <laughs> you got to. 
You got to mute that shutter. <laughs> he does this all the time, I swear, guys. We'll be on Zoom calls, and it'll just be, like, me in the background making, like, a ridiculous face and, like, on a whole work call. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's pretty true. Uh, I was actually getting Will sniffing that glass because it was so sensual. He's like... <laughs> I get into it, man. I get into it. It's a... It's a Sensual. Eventually, you'll you will become a background of one of my Zoom meetings. <laughs> nice. I'll, I'll take it. That's what, that's what people end up doing. I I catch people in weird faces, and then uh, I screenshot it and make them backgrounds of my Zoom meetings. Well, I I appreciate it. Yeah. This is this is glorious. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could spend a good hour just in the nose. <laughs> I, I really could, and I could probably find different things for about thirty minutes or so. Hey there, Eric. Welcome on in. Matt says it's his wife's hospital link jacking it. So he will try and get back in in a few. I don't know if Donald, Donald, are you going to come in? Come in and tell us about that. Come on, make yourself presentable. Put on some clothes. All you need is a shirt. Yeah, seriously. You don't need pants. Thankfully, you put on pants. You don't need that. Just do that. You don't even need that. You're good. Just do this. <laughs> Crop it off. We can see all of this extra bacon in the background yeah, now. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey guys. You know, it's really all you need. Funny. Uh, Eric, you just joined in. Matt's having some internet issues. It's usually us, but surprisingly Matt's enough, it's Matt this time. Does not have I'm going in for a sip. Ethernet cord. I've already done that. I don't know what your problem is. This is yeah. I the. The fruit bomb, the tropical fruit bomb that this is, is just beyond insane. It's nothing like anything I've ever had before. Even with some of the other older Irish whiskeys that we had, it's just, it's wow. insane. Hey, it's, Cliffy. It's guava and peach that kind of take over the mid palate. But, but there not, is. it's just such wonderful, wonderful uh, tropical fruit notes. Hi, Donald. Did you get a shirt on, sir? <laughs> hey Donald. Yeah, Welcome on right. in. So going? so we're here, you know, making love to our Teeling 24. Why don't you tell us about what you got over there that we don't have over here? Uh, let me grab it. Ow. Uh, so it's uh one of the Brabazon bottlings. It's um their port cask. Ooh. So it's let make, uh let me make you big real quick. Hang on, show it again. Put that back up. <sighs> Nice. Yeah. Wow. So they have three in the series. Um, one was finished in six kinds of sherry. Um, this one is ruby port, tawny port, and white port finish all combined. And from what I know, it's about 14 years old. And it's just a strawberry banana grape bomb in the glass. Ooh. Wow. Is it dry at all or is it all just fruit? It's mostly fruit. There is a bit of dryness, but the fruit is really pronounced, especially on the nose with the strawberry. That sounds interesting. It, does. it is. Strawberry banana? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Especially with Irish. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. The creaminess of it, I bet. Uh-huh. Probably, like, reminds me of thinking of, like, that strawberry banana yogurt. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. That... Like a strawberry banana smoothie with uh, mm. vanilla yogurt in it. Yeah. That'd be a good way to characterize it. Sounds wonderful. That sounds delicious. Yeah, it sounds really great. I will say with this one, it did take a while to open up because at first you kind of get that overwhelming nor uh, note that uh, port tends to bring. Mm. But once it opened up, just really, really good. So I an account in Austin that has the 24 still, and I'm like, can I justify spending money on that? Yes, yes, you can. Absolutely. I, I as I'm sitting here sipping on it, honestly, like I'm getting closer and closer to spending that money. So Matt, you're kind of back. There, finally back. I don't know Ooh. something crap happened. Does William still have a bottle of the 24? Do you know? I don't think so. Boom. Not that I'm aware of, but you can ask mm. him. You bet your ass I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since we've had it, and now I'm just like, why don't we have it? Why don't we have this bottle? <laughs> so what you're drinking over there, Donald, is that something that was just 
Does it release just up there in, in Canada or? No, it, I think it was um, Europe, Canada, and uh, I think Japan. Mm. It's in the 700 mil bottles. A lot of the stuff we get here from Teeling. Instead so, of the 750s. That's yeah. weird. That is weird. Huh. Well, I mean, weird. we even get our Jack Daniels barrel proof in 700 mil bottles here. And not That's the 750s. Weird. Are they labeled 70 CL? Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's so weird. So it's like they make the trip to whatever warehouse in the UK to come back to Canada. Like, it's crazy. Well, I wonder if they're even going there or if they're just shipping it straight. They're just. I wonder if it's something to do with like paying taxes on certain shipping or. Maybe. Yeah, or like size of. Yeah, I know that's a thing. Like certain amount of booze or proof per yeah. bottle gets taxed differently. My, you know, kind of the reason why teeling or not teeling, but like Irish whiskey in general was doing unmalted barley. So we're getting taxed on malted barley, that kind of thing. Yeah. And the, and the 40% releases. That's so crazy. And I, I, I'm sure that's also got to do with the reason why we get the Nika from the barrel and the 500 mil bottles, like in Japan here as well. Jax, we we get those seven fifties in Nika. Yeah, yeah. I just got a like a citrusy, grapefruity wave wave there that last time. Donald, uh, do you have any questions uh, for these two guys? Uh, any or any uh, Irish or sorry, yeah, any Irish things that you want to talk about? I just uh, you know, I'm just excited to see you know finally stuff being produced from the the Teeling Distillery to see what's you know, because a lot of it was produced, uh, of course, we all know from Cooley, the vast majority, and uh, a lot of it's from stocks from Cooley. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how they put their own stamp on Irish whiskey, producing it going forward. Because yeah. for me, um, like Cooley has a distinct character. As soon as it touches an ex bourbon barrel, it goes into being a huge tropical fruit bomb instantly the more time in an ex bourbon barrel the more tropical fruit it becomes so it's going to be really telling to see if that's going to be implanted into the dna at teeling or if it's going to be a, a different maybe a more multi-profile maybe a, a more buried profile just all depending on the the distillate and the choice of casks Donald, that's such a great point because, you know, we're so used to working with like whiskeys that have been around for over a hundred years. And now we're in this like beginning creativity part where it'll be, you're right. Like it'll be exciting to see what the consistency and is. For. Really? I mean, those three distilleries, uh, Middleton, Bushmills and Cooley. I mean, when people think Irish whiskey, they think those three in particular, the DNA, their profiles. So like, um, one of the new distillers, Powers Court, Noel Sweeney, the former master distiller at Cooley, who laid a lot of the stuff that you guys use at Teeling Down, just got to work with one of his former whiskeys, and it was interesting to see his take on it. So going forward, I mean, it's going to be you know amazing to see all these different takes on Irish whiskey and whether it'll become as diversified as Scotch. Yeah, right. I <clears throat> agree. It's exciting times. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. It's there there are some things to be excited about. <laughs> yeah. And not really just for Teeling, but I really feel like just for Irish whiskey in general. It's it's one of the fastest growing uh, spirit categories at the moment. Um, and to kind of see what everyone's take on Irish whiskey is, is going to be very just kind of fun to join that journey and check it out. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even when you look at the senior teeling with Great Northern, um, him putting out, you know, peated uh, whiskey as well, and then supplying it to smaller um, non-producing distillers at the moment who are trying to get up and running. Uh, I mean, it's it's incredible. Yeah. Totally agree. Yep. I see someone mentioning Vinny's, what I mentioned earlier. Chicago has a lot of, like, the extra cool stuff that we always get. Yeah, um, they they did an acacia wood cask as well, and the chestnut. That's yeah. like Alex mentioned that that's one of his favorites that he's done. Yeah, he I I was fortunate that. to get a sample of it. So, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I wish we got more of that stuff down here. Mm -hmm. 
Things don't make it all the way down to Texas all the time. One of our regulars, uh, Eric Evanson, was asking, are you planning on any age-stated age stated tealings coming out? I assume, you know, that's obviously the plan, but... We are not told about that. However, okay. well, just being that like so much of our whiskey is is and could be older without the age statements on it, I'm sure that they are planning something in their back pocket, and I'm excited to see what that could be. Yeah, like the just released Brabazon Series Three is actually the first of the series that's got an age statement of 14 years on it. Um, and I know that a lot of like the the Renaissance series, like the 18 years, have age stated. Uh, the revivals were all age stated pretty well. Um, that 12 year revival for a 12 year single malt when it first came out blew my socks off. It was amazing stuff. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You know, it's kind of hard because we haven't really gotten a chance to try like all of like the crazy innovations that Teeling has done. So we are excited as, as you guys just to like hear, hear y'all talk about it. Yeah, I, I tend to watch them like a hawk. So, like, as soon as one comes out and I know it's either available in Ireland or available here, I'm either ordering and having it shipped to my friend in the U.S. to bring back, or I'm waiting until it drops here by cozying up to one of the liquor store managers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm all over the place in different liquor stores, so if I see something that's a little bit more rare, I can I can shoot um, a note over to Matt and happens from there yep yeah so i'm gonna pour one of the most interesting whiskeys i've probably had from teeling that we probably don't have no uh because again it's <laughs> yes 700 mil bottles but it's the uh barley wine finish barley wine huh? yes interesting yeah i'm never a barley wine fan and it came out in a clear bottle what can yep. you show, show me the, the yeah, color, can you see the color on that yeah, it's like a straw color. Oh, yeah, wow. like apple juice. Looks like the bare barley. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, one of the the family single grains that's just been finished in an ex Galway Bay Brewery barley wine cask. Because um, the ones that I have, they did a stout and also a strong uh, red Irish ale cask finish too. And all three of them are are amazing, but that stout one, wow. That's dope. That's so cool. I'd love to try yeah, that. Yeah, kind of jealous. I mean, outside of the peated one, I like everything that you know comes out of teeling. Uh, yeah, that's so far. <laughs> that peated one is just going to be really interesting for me to try comparing it to you know your traditional Irish peat of Connemara, where it's light and sweet, unless you drink the cask strength, which is just the weirdest damn whiskey ever produced in the world. It's like every tire yard in Ireland was set on fire and they <laughs> every Mercedes diesel in Ireland to fire up and smoke the barley. It's That's like insane. It is. It is just weird and plasticky and burnt rubber and somehow got honey sweetness in there. That's amazing. I've never tried the 29. The, the cask strength, oh, man. That sounds amazing. I want to try that so bad. I, I figured it would be up your alley. I still can't decide if I like it or not. It's just so out there for me. That sounds so good. I, I love whiskeys that are described like that. I can't decide if I like it or not. I, that, that's, that's, that's Oh, I want to try that so bad. Yeah. Those are the things that make me the happiest is people saying like, I don't know about this one. I'm like, Ooh, that's probably going to be one I'm going to love. Bring it. Bring on the weird and funky. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. You'd probably have the same opinion of this because it is just pure bar barley. So think like an, a distilled Ovaltine biscuit. Ooh. Really, <laughs> really, really <laughs> malty. Ovaltine biscuit. That's. Malty. Yeah. yeah. And I hope you love malt. <laughs> Um, I was in at a store and I should have bought it, but I was there for work, so I didn't. But I saw um, Old Tub. Have you guys seen that? It's a bourbon. It was like I had a friend who like had a little tiny bottle from Kentucky, and we tried it, and I was like, "This is amazing!" And then I saw it, and I took a picture, and I didn't buy it, but I was like, "This is so cool!" Like that kind of like weird. Like that was one that I was like, "I don't know if I like it, but I do like it, and I still remember it." You know. 
we've had four different versions of old tub and all four of the bottles tasted different. Mm -hmm. There's okay. a consistency, there's a consistency issue with them. Um, yeah. The bottle that was released in BFW was awful. And then we got samples sent to us from a bunch of other people from around the, uh, around the U S and all of them were very vastly different from each other. Interesting. So it, it, they're, they're, they're having some serious consistency issues, but from what we were told, the stuff that came from the distillery, the, the distillery only bottles of old tub were amazing stuff. Mm. So I don't know. It's kind of that one thing. Like you're like, I don't know if I like it, but it's really kind of interesting. Yeah. Matt keeps on trying to join us again. I'm not sure if he's going to make it back in or not. Um, Batteries just up to sit there and drink the 24 and then forget yeah, about he, it, right? Yeah, he popped out the 24. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was already the, talking to you guys. Where the hell were you? Right? <laughs> he might think that he's still talking to us, and that's perfectly fine, too. Uh, chat room, if you guys got any more questions for uh, Kyle or Irene or even Donald even Ramsey, Donald, I mean, Irish Whiskey Yoda, since we have him on if you have questions for him, now's a good time to throw them in. Irish with the Yoda, I like that. Yeah, it was Jason that gave me that name. That's what he has been dubbed, and that's what he has been since. That's right. Um, Donald is writing a book on, on Irish whiskey. How is that coming? Slow. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, co COVID has basically tripled my workload. Okay. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. Um, lots going on. Yep. Healing, Ooh. yeah, thirty-seven year, yeah, and then um, I've seen that online. That's insane. And that that's euros. Yeah, uh, pound. Yeah. Uh, like I don't even want to know the conversion. seven thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. Jump change, right? We'll run down to the bank tomorrow. That's what almost ten thousand U.S. Yeah, I'm yeah. Buy all the twenty-four U.S. No, thanks. I'm good. I'll spend my $400 on a 24 if I find it again. <laughs> I don't know if I <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm serious about, yeah, I'd buy yeah. it at this point. Oh, man. That has got some serious mm -hmm. bitter lemon on it, too. Like, you know that kind of bitter citrus you get from some single malts? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That barley wine just makes it really interesting. Like n nothing like anything I've had before. Like it's in what way? 1,198 US. Thanks for doing that, ma that math for us. No, there we go. Yeah, thanks yeah. for that, Cliffy. Go ahead and <laughs> put that into perspective. <laughs> about 10, though. Yeah. yeah. I'm have a little bit more single grain. There you go. Yeah, that that's just such a solid, solid product, the single grain. Yeah. You know, the core line, not including the 24 there, because, you know, it's not something we can get all the time, but between right. the single grain and the single malt, it's really, it's really a toss up for me, which one I would, you know, I don't know. See, and to me, it's between the single malt and the pot still. Really? That, that new pot still is really, but really it's good. It's good. I'm not going to, I'm not saying it's not. I and, like and, all of it. And to me, we've had the single grain in house. We've gone through almost a bottle of it already. So I've spent my time with it. I think the next one we're going to buy is probably going to be one of the other two. Cool. I'm I'm single malt all the way. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I do like that single, single malt. malt. That's single malt. I don't know. So I'm, good. I think I'm pot still and single. Pot still. Pot still and single grain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pot still and single grain. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I'd have to say single malt for me. Mm -hmm. Um, the pot still is growing on me. It. I didn't like it very much at first, to be very honest. Was it kind of like what I was saying like earlier? I'm like the first time I had it, I was like I got so many different things, and the second time you're like, okay, now I'm experiencing it in a different way, right? Yeah, and I also think that it's the wine yeast that makes it very different mm -hmm. to like the conventional pot stills. I mean, it is a fifty-fifty mash bill this one, um, but um, that I think the wine yeast is what's doing it because it brings out some more of the earthy tones that you're not quite used to or accustomed to seeing in other pot stills. And I, I'm a complete sucker for the style. So if there's a pot still out there, I go and buy it right away. And mm -hmm. it's been interesting to compare all the different ones from the traditional producers to the newer producers. Now, 
And I have to say, there's distinct styles starting to emerge uh, from those new producers. And again, it's just going to be interesting and wonderful to see how that progresses, particularly for Ireland's native style of whiskey. Yeah, with a new kind of... Yeah, I mean, because you've got, you know, producers now doing virgin Irish oak with 100% uh, pot still at four years old. Um, you've got them doing different wine casks. You've even got alternative woods like cherry, acacia, chestnut. I mean, the sky's... You sky's know, limit. Japanese yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yep. Doesn't even have to be oak. Nope. <laughs> just something yeah. like... It's just got to not leak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. Only requirement. And not be toxic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, we can't. Like you, know, you know, glue the inside, but. Or like uh, the Romans, I think at one point experimented <laughs> with yew wood. And found it was poisoning people, and it was like mm -hmm. maybe that's not a great experiment to run. So, well, but somebody asked for experiment. Yeah, have yeah. A in the chat, Irene, have you? Uh, in LA, no, but um, I have a wonderful counterpart named Una Green, and she has done that. But uh, actually, unless if you follow Una Green, her and I are like best friends, so we're always on each other's social media. Yeah, as you can say, they're they're always on each other's social. Yeah. Um, Cliff, you might you might have recognized her from uh, one of our other streams because she's a you know three peat now, so three timer. Yeah, three timer, four timer. Yeah. We're we're gonna be on. Uh, yeah, next month we're gonna be. I'm gonna just jump in on the next one, so I can be a three timer. I was gonna. Yeah, I'm just gonna. No, I'm just jumping in. I don't need approval. I'm just jumping in. Just make sure. <laughs> That's fine. No, it's funny because Matt texted me today and he's like, "Is Kyle gonna come on?" I was like, "He's more than welcome to." I don't know, if, like, if he wants. <laughs> if you want to send me a link, I'm just knocking on Matt's door during the time. I'm like, hey, open up. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, we're we're like, Matt drinking together. I'll be like, Hello. yeah, I'm gonna show up at Matt's house. <laughs> I was joking around telling Gareth, like, because Gareth is at it. He's in New York City, and he was like, "I'm so bored," and I was like, "Well, just come to Austin, hang out with me." I was like, "Come down." <laughs> Come down for this thing, and we can just like bring drinking together. <laughs> like, yeah, there you go. Oh, is, is he gonna join us? Is he, is he back? Yeah. There he is. He's Ooh, Tom to come to Texas. Tom the problem. He's barely moving. He's, Again, man, I got great audio. I got no video. I'm so he's, glitchy. He's in the Matrix. Yeah, it, totally. it's all screwed up. The Matrix. <laughs> well, that's okay. As long as you can hear me, that's all that matters. That's fair. I, the video squat. Get, yeah, like I said, my, my wife's hospital stuff is totally jacking with it at the moment. And she won't let me reset the router because it's going to screw up her hospital connection. So oh, no, I can't people do it until, uh, she's done with her report. And of course, we hear a report. Well, it's totally screwed up. Yeah, I made the kids all their internet stuff off. <laughs> so we'll just have to do it with a crappy screen. But as long as the audio works, we're good. You guys can deal with crappy screen. You can always get up on <laughs> your phone. That'll just have to be what it is. But well, yeah, it'll, it'll be fun with doing it. So. You're also not left in like a very awkward position. Like, <laughs> <that's true. laughs> I've been frozen. I, I just look like in a compromised position. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really wish I could do uh, <laughs> backdrops in this one because I have so many great screenshots of Irene. <laughs> so next time you're on go ahead and send us some pictures and we can change that bacon yeah. background. <laughs> perfect or, I have oh, so oh. many of her just like pounding the you the know how we you know how we put these pictures up <laughs> oh speaking of put the pictures up we're about to get off the stream real quick let's go over some of these other ones real quick because your tasting room is beautiful yeah so oh yeah yep so that's at the distillery one of the tasting rooms at the distillery, private tasting room. So they'll they'll do this for events, oh, company meetings, <laughs> just a fun little place to go and work at at during the day. Set up your computer. So if you guys want to go to Ireland quarantine for two weeks, yes, yeah. a meeting. Yes, mm -hmm. yes please. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then we we'll have so that, yeah. those are that uh, you know, Oregon pine washbacks and the stainless steel ones. Cool. Yeah, we mentioned that. Um, earlier when we were talking about the pot still. Pot still, yeah. And then the last one we have here is the, the bang, 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 bang bar. Kyle, you tell the story about the bang no, bar. No, go for it. <laughs> no, you do it. 
So there was a man. It was so interesting how uh, <laughs> our one ambassador talked about it. But <laughs> that's why was, I don't want to say it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> how did he say it? it was, <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. How did he say it? Uh, anyways, there, there's yeah, there there was a guy that would go around and like he was like a character in Dublin and kind of like they called him Bang Bang. He would just go and like he like go yeah. and play randomly, like a local play, and just be like. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> like somebody's like Sam. Bang, bang, bang. Wow. But we have we we have uh this amazing uh brand ambassador from Ireland that uh just through translation in one of our meetings he's like so yeah because we're trying to figure out what we were talking about and we're like what is where's the name of this bar come from? And he's like, Oh, this guy he went around just banging people and like after what? And he's like, Yeah, we would go to like local plays and bang people. And we're like, wait a minute, what? Um, <laughs> There's not one word to that. That's wonderful. That is just wonderful. And all right. Okay, so technically, he would say he would. So shoot, yeah. He would say he would finger bang people. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, that's technically, that's what you say. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be EPA. You would go around finger banging people. You don't have an EPA around here. <laughs> and this was in front of like so many of our bosses. And I, I can't wait to send this live Whoa. stream back or this stream to your bosses and on recap. That, that, that yeah. is, <laughs> I don't brilliant. think this far. <laughs> that is no, just the most brilliant. I think you're going to hilarious. <laughs> they have to watch two hours of stuff. They'll probably. We were dying. We're like, what? It's fine. That's yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> I think every big city's got a character like that. <laughs> Oh, but that's wonderful. Oh, so that's what the Bang Bang Bar is named after. A guy that used to go around and just, you know, finger banging people. <laughs> oh, God. So when you go there, you'll know the story. Um, what I also think is funny is the POS system, like the register. Kyle actually saw this when we were doing a distillery oh, tour. Oh, yeah. Like, website and do your own distillery tour. And if you can figure out how to maneuver yourself around to the back of the bar. There's a picture of Keanu Reeves dressed like Jesus. <laughs> yes. it's the most random thing ever. And it's on like, so it's on the online virtual distillery tour. You can like just pick stuff and you can pivot the camera. Every three, everything's a 365 degree angle kind of deal. They get the mm -hmm. angles from the whole distillery. It's absolutely fun to like, Go on the Teeling website and play around with that. But if you go to the Bang Bang Bar, and if you get good at like moving stuff around, if you go to the register and flip it around, there's Keanu Reeves dressed as Jesus on the register. I was like, "What is this?" That's brilliant. It's so funny. Yeah. But it's now we crazy. really can't wait to go in real life. Yeah. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Got to plan a trip to. Uh... Uh, oh yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I want to go anyway. Yeah. But yeah. now I've got to go. Yeah. <laughs> to Ireland before? No. Uh-uh. We have not, but we we are it's it's on our list. It's a bucket list for sure. There yeah. in Scotland are going to happen. Mhm. Mm I have really no excuse of not to been cuz I have like two different sets of cousins who live there and I'm not Irish. <laughs> I'm Irish. I'm of Irish heritage. Uh, I just yeah. I'm sure there's a little bit of you know, I'm just an all-American mutt, you know. <laughs> My mom's a Donahue. <laughs> all right. So anything you guys need to let our the viewers know, know about Teeling coming up? Anything that... We talked about some releases coming out in uh, January of next year. Yeah, you can get pot still right now. Um, right. I would, uh, you know, support your, your independence as much as you can. If they don't have it and it's one of your favorites, just ask them to pick it up. Um and it's, you know, a great price point for how special it is. And then, yeah, next year, the uh, the Black Pits is going to be coming out. And you never know. You might be lucky enough to find the, a 24 lane around somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, kind of going back to, you know, Donald's point, go out there, try some of the, the Irish whiskeys out there because it, it's a growing category. 
I think Teeling's had a lot of great success and a lot of fun with the category and has been doing some great stuff. There's always new innovations going out there. So, you know, just open yourself out up to the Irish category in, in itself. And uh, while you're doing that, pick up some Teeling, try it. Yep. Agreed. Absolutely. And there's Absolutely. like, you know, that's what's so fun about doing these types of things. Cause there, there is some Irish whiskey out there that we're like, like, oh, I mean, that would be, that's okay. You know, there's a lot of different things on the shelf and that's why we have our jobs because if there was one whiskey to drink, then yep. that wouldn't need this job. Right. <laughs> so right. yeah, everything's great in its own unique way. So, but yeah. Well, we appreciate it guys. And what do we have coming out tomorrow and when and Thursday? Mm. You edited that shit earlier. Come on now. Yeah, and I don't remember at all. Something really so. old with a bourbon age. Is that one coming out this week? Let's see. Hang on two seconds. I got a couple more buttons I got to click on, and then I'll be able to tell you exactly what's coming out uh, tomorrow and the next day. Tomorrow we have coming out for us. If it loads. Seriously. I want to say it's Koval. Right, I think we have Koval single Koval barrel bourbon, bourbon and oh my god rye from High West. Yes, Koval bourbon and oh my god rye. Do you see this? Oh, rye. Uh, Whiskey Crusaders just put it in the chat. Matt did. Yep. Oh okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, reading, I'm reading the chat. <laughs> Way to go, Matt. He's okay. Like, how do you get hold of my schedule? <laughs> Koval's coming out tomorrow. Uh, we'll have a uh, OMG rye coming out on Thursday's release. Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned for an amazing Irish whiskey book from Donald that'll be out, you know, 2022. Yeah. Whenever this stupid thing is over. I'd like, be happy to get a quote um, in there, you know, no big deal. Yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Did anybody get a screenshot? <laughs> <laughs> Hold, please. If we could all make that simple real quick and go. I got you. No, oh, I want to it. There's <laughs> always the replay. <laughs> Yay, internet. <laughs> yes. Oh, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another Monday live with the Whiskey Crusaders. We'll you see you again out. next Monday. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>